What's up guys, I'm Brian Lovett aka B-Love. Today I'm going to show you how to take your 3D prints from this stringy looking mess to a not so stringy looking mess and give you some tips along the way. Let's get into it. Now I'm going to show you some tips for preventing this in the first place, especially with materials like TPU when we're printing these coronavirus masks. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of start off with a way to fix it after the fact. There we go. I think that worked better than I possibly could have hoped or imagined. And obviously using a not a flamethrower isn't the most practical solution to this. And in fact, this is a not a not a flamethrower. This is a DIY replica that I made myself. I'll drop a link down in the description to this. I even 3D printed the Boring Company logo over here. But the point of this is that if you do happen to have something that you've printed that has some stringing, oftentimes heat can actually melt the material enough to get rid of that stringing. Now, you do have to be careful here because too much heat can actually cause the material, especially if you're using something like PLA, to actually start to collapse and melt. With PETG and TPU, they're pretty flexible. Well, TPU is flexible, PETG is high temperature resistant. So between the two, uh, this is a pretty safe way to get rid of stringing. And as you can see the results, uh, it's not too bad. So we got rid of the bulk of the stringing. There are some large chunks that I'll have to kind of pull off there, but all in all, they look pretty darn good. Okay, now obviously a flamethrower isn't the most practical way to do this. Well, actually, I, I think it probably is the most practical and efficient because you can do 20, 30 masks in kind of one go. You just kind of run across them, but yeah, okay, not everybody has a flamethrower, although you could. So just throwing that out there, while you're on lockdown, maybe you should build a flamethrower. But if you don't have one, there are other options, of course. You can use a stove. So if you have a gas stove, you just need a heat source. You can run these across the heat source on the stove. If you have a heat gun or uh, even a hairdryer, a hairdryer is oftentimes hot enough to melt the little stringy mess that comes through some of these masks. So with that said, how do we actually prevent this from happening in the first place? Obviously, that's the ultimate goal. So let's jump into that and kind of dissect that. So we had, obviously, this original mask. Look at that stringy mess. It's really, really bad. And then we've got this one that I just printed, and it's not perfect, but I'm going to call this, instead of stringing, I'm going to call this more like wisping, because it's really just a few very, very tiny fibers. You could literally just take your finger, run it through here, and they would be completely gone. So how do we go from this mess to this pretty good model? And of course you could tweak this further and you could get it down to where there's absolutely no wisping, but there's a, there's a few trade-offs and balances. And so let's jump in and talk about that. Now we're gonna talk about a few concepts that might be foreign to you if you're new to 3D printing. One is retraction. And so let's think about retraction this way. We've got our printer nozzle right here, and we've got our filament. In this case, it's the flexible TPU. A Bowden-style hot end essentially feeds the TPU or the filament from up higher. It goes through a tube, and then it goes into the hot end and into the nozzle. Now, the downside to that is you can get some bending and flexing before it gets into the hot end, so it can jam and it makes printing flexible filaments a little bit harder. Now these are printers like, for example, the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro are Bowden style printers. The other type you have is direct drive and those are things like the Prusa Mark III S, for example. And with those, you have the gears, you have these actual teeth and gears that are feeding the filament in, but it's right above the nozzle. So you have the gears right up here and it's just feeding it in. So there's less room for it to bend and flex it makes it a little bit easier to work with flexible materials. Now, of course, there's some upgrades you can do to the Ender 3. You can even make it direct drive, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. We can do another video on that subject. 
Now, the thing you need to think about here is we've got this concept called retraction. So let's think about what's happening when we're 3D printing. Our filament here is getting fed down a tube or gears directly into this nozzle, which is extremely hot. And it's basically these gears are pressing down and this thick piece of filament is getting squeezed through this very, very, very tiny, depending on the nozzle that you've got, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 millimeter hole. And what's gonna happen there is you've got heat and pressure. And because of that heat and pressure, even after those gears stop pressing this filament down into the nozzle, you're still going to get what's called oozing. And so that's where, because of that pressure, even after the nozzle moves to a new location, it still starts oozing out filament. And that is precisely why we get these crazy stringing issues right here. So as you can see, the nozzle was traveling across the surface of this from this point to this point, and it was just oozing filament the entire way across. Fortunately, we can do a couple things to get rid of that. So let's jump into Prusa Slicer and we'll go over a few settings and show you how to do that. Now, retraction isn't the only setting we're gonna take a look at. You can also get stringing based on printing at too high of a temperature or printing too quickly. So we're gonna take a look at those settings now as well. Let's jump in. We've got our beautiful Bolivar mask already modified to have TPU and PETG as two separate layers. One of the things you wanna remember is if you're printing too quickly, if, if you watch some of my videos, I talk about how you can optimize printing PETG and you can do that by increasing the speed at which the nozzle travels. But by doing that, you also run the risk of making it too fast and getting all these strings across here. So just to start with, what we're gonna do is we're going to go to uh, the original Prusa Mark 3S 0.6 or 0.4 nozzle, depending on the nozzle you have installed on your printer. We're gonna go with those default settings and then we're gonna select uh, Prusa or actually in this case, generic pet G because we already know that our pet G is, uh, is correct. And what I've noticed is that at least on my printer on the Mark 3S, the TPU prints fine at the default settings for pet G with a couple modifications, but in general, the speed is okay. Where I get into trouble and the reason this one looks so bad is because I went in and modified things and I set the print speeds to quite a bit higher. And so I got this really atrocious stringing. So once we reset this to the default pet G settings, we can go in and we can just take a look at a couple things. Now, one setting that you can use is avoid crossing perimeters. I kind of talked about this a little bit, but what ends up happening, what a perimeter is, is for example, this mask, it's really easy to think of what a perimeter is. It's essentially the outside edge. So as the printer is printing around the outside, instead of crossing the perimeter, so going from say this point to this point, it actually stays on the inside, goes around to the next starting point, and then starts printing again. What that does is it prevents these kind of massive strings that we've got here. So as you can see on this model, there was no more perimeter crossing. So by having that checked, it does take longer to actually slice your model and it does take longer to print. But in this case, really wasn't bad. It added four minutes to the overall print time. And I think that's a fine trade-off given the uh, quality difference we get out of this. So I would definitely highly suggest avoid crossing perimeters for this exact model. Now, the other thing is obviously, like I said, we reset all of the speed settings. So you'll see none of these are modified from the defaults and that is just fine. Um, under the uh, filament settings, we went in and the extruder we set to 220. Now I'm using the Ziltec PETG and Ziltec TPU. And by using my, uh, my temperature tower, I was able to determine that 220 is kind of the optimal temperature for me. If I go higher than that, I'm gonna get more stringing. Uh, but of course, if you're not using Ziltec TPU or Ziltec PETG, you really need to print a temp tower to make sure that you're staying at that optimal temperature so you don't get those crazy overhangs or like the sagging bridge perimeters or anything like that. You can see that with my settings, my bridges, uh, normally this, this nose piece is pretty bad on these. Uh, this one looks pretty much flawless, uh, especially when you compare it to this one where I was going a little bit faster. You can see that it got a little bit rougher there um, and there's some issues. 
Now, the last thing you really wanna go in here and do is you can go to filament overrides and there's this retract on layer change and wipe while retracting. And I check both of those. Neither of those are checked by default. And what that does is every time you get to a new layer, so a new layer is being printed, what it's going to do is retract the filament. And we talked about how because there's pressure on the nozzle, it starts stringing and oozing. Now what retracting does is it actually, in between layer changes, it pulls back the filament just a couple millimeters. And in this case, it looks like it's uh, 1.4 millimeters. So what it'll do is between each layer change, it pulls it back 1.4 millimeters to alleviate that pressure. Now, if you have a Bowden tube set up like the Ender 3, there are some problems with retracting too quickly that can actually cause bunching of the filament, perhaps even clogging of the filament in the nozzle. So you wanna play with that setting a little bit and just make sure your retractions aren't happening too fast. Now the other one is wipe while retracting and that one takes a little bit more explaining but essentially what happens is it actually hides any of that oozing. Like if you have a little bit of filament hanging off the tip of the nozzle, it actually hides it on the inner layers of the model, on the inside walls of the model so that you don't again get that stringing across the whole model. So by doing just the retraction upon layer change, the wipe while retracting, which again just wipes across there, and doing the no crossing perimeters, along with slowing down the print slightly, you can go from this result to this result. And the thing to remember about all this is, this isn't a one size fits all thing. This is going to work well for this particular 3D model, but if you have something else that you're printing, these settings might not be ideal. So it's kind of, it sucks, but it's a little bit trial and error. That's just the way this stuff goes. It's also worth noting that a lot of these settings are kind of dependent upon the slicer that you're using. So in this case, these are Prusa slicer specific settings, but they might have slightly different names if you're using Cura, for example. So definitely read the documentation and make sure you understand which settings you're changing. These, you know, with anything with 3D printing, there's always a little bit of wiggle room. So depending on the printer you have, the type of material, the brand of material you're using, even PETG between two different brands prints differently, you have to go in and kind of tweak things. And that's what kind of makes this hobby a little bit infuriating, but also a lot of fun because as somebody who likes to tinker and play with things, uh, you can get a lot of satisfaction and joy out of taking something that wasn't quite right and making it really awesome, uh, like we have with these designs. So I really hope this helped you guys out. If anybody has any questions, please, as always, let me know down below. And I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. Be sure to hit the bell as well so that you hear all of my new videos as soon as they're coming out. And of course, always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. That tells Google that my videos are good and it boosts me up in the ranking. So thank you all so much. And while you're just chilling, waiting for the video to end, you can go ahead and check out this playlist or you can check out this video down here, whatever, whatever you want to do. It's, it's cool. But if you play more of my videos, it's, it's not, I'm not going to be mad. It's going to be awesome. I promise. Just, just click one. See you guys.